Today is Wednesday, February the 12th, 2003, and this is the beginning of an interview with uh, Mr. Lawrence Baxter, and uh, he lives in uh, 715 High Street in Onega, Kansas, here in, in Pottawatomie County. And uh, Mr. Baxter was uh, uh, born uh, August the 17th, 1922. So, how old are you now? 80. You're 80 years old. Um, my name is Dean Schoengert, and we're meeting in my home today in Wamego, Kansas, and I will be the interviewer. And I am the coordinator in our county for the Veterans Oral History Project. We thank you, Mr. Baxter, for coming in today. Uh, what were you doing? Uh, you remember what you were doing when Pearl Harbor started? It was uh, when we heard it first. It was uh, Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon, and you. And that was the big story that day, I'll tell you. And of course, everybody knew that we was in trouble. You were, you were in high school. And uh, no, I I graduated in 1940. Oh, so you were already out of I high school. Out of, I was out of high school, and uh, uh, of course, then right after Pearl Harbor, why? Fort Riley opened up, and uh, I went up there and worked that winter, and then the summer of 41, I went to Wichita and went to work for Boeing. Boeing Airport, there, really. And uh, I worked at Boeing till. Uh, I got drafted. Mm-hmm. So, when you were drafted, where did you go? Went to Fort Leavenworth, and got drafted there, and in uh, 43, I didn't think I was ever going to leave Leavenworth, but anyway, I finally ended up in Lincoln, Nebraska. Really? That's uh, where they sent me in. And uh, there's where I took my basic training. Hmm. And then uh, after I got my basic training, why they sent me to uh, Laurie Airfield in the uh, outskirts of Denver. So how, how, long, went, how long were you in basic training? Was that I was in basic training, oh, I don't know, eight weeks, something like that. That was... And uh, then they would, then they kind of cut that short a little bit because they, they wanted to fill classes out in uh, uh, Laura Airfield. They wanted me to go through armament schools, what they called it at that time. Uh, load, loading bombs and, and oh. uh, uh, air and uh, in the big ones and then in the fighters while your uh, smaller guns we had to put the ammunition in for. It's what I was trained to do. Well, I see. Uh -huh. well, how long did that last? That <laughs> that lasted about. Nine weeks, I believe, but I was there just a little longer than that, not much. Mm -hmm. Then I was sent to uh, the West Coast in the in the spring now, and uh, the forty-four. Yeah. And when we left Denver, we left a big snowstorm. We got to California, of course, you know what they always advertise that for, sunshine, and it was. <laughs> and uh, 
then uh, we we went uh, just with a while with the whole train load of soldiers. But then anyway, I uh, got to go with a bunch to what it amounted to is just training new pilots. They were just cadets out of cadet school. And uh, uh, they sent us up in Washington State. And uh, Euphrata was the uh, name of the air base up there. And, and uh, there's where we. Uh, the pilots came in, and I can, don't remember how long it took, but anyway, they they had P-38s up there, and of course we'd load the bombs on. And they were small, but and then put the uh, ammunition in for their uh, machine guns on the airplanes, and I trained there, uh, helped train there for quite a bit. That P-38 was a kind of a well. It was two two bodies to yeah, it, didn't it? And it was it was uh, real nice. Uh, L five was the last uh, last of the in World War Two that came out, and uh, they probably weren't wasn't as glamorous as you know your others, but uh, they they was a nice. And uh, Washington uh, was cut out in the nowhere where we was in the air base, but of course Kansas, you know, it's, it's, when you're raised here, it's just pretty nice. But anyway, <laughs> we uh, spent all summer there then, and then we got an awful snowstorm. Uh -huh. So they called us all in and said we're going to have to make some changes. So they uh, said we're going to have to go back down to California. <clears throat> so they shipped us down and and. Uh, then in about two weeks, when well, the planes finally arrived, because they said they kept, the, of course, the government's got big equipment, but about the time they get the runways open, they'd blow shut. But anyway, <laughs> we, we went down in, in, in Southern California, and, uh, and that, that was a, I'll tell you, that was a big treat. And uh, really, because of the weather and the snow up in Washington. That, yeah, and then uh, just take a train ride south, and then get in the uh, balmy weather. Boy, I'll tell you that that was. Uh, I I was trying to think of the uh, Daggett uh, was one of the towns real close. To that air base, I forget what air base we was at, really. But we was there all winter. Really? And uh, were you loading live bombs? Or? Well, there was 500 pound bombs, but what they done, they they really didn't have much poop in them, but they had enough when they went off, they could tell, you know, where they where they was, uh, you know, whether they hit the target or not, yeah. you know. Um, uh, that target practice out in the out desert, the desert, desert. There. Yeah, Mojave Desert is where, where it was at. And uh, anyway, uh, we stayed there till uh, spring. Then they decided there wasn't going to be no more pilots come in. So they took about half of us and put us back in the army <laughs> and, and sent us to Louis Alexander, Louisiana. I'll never replace that. that <laughs> they had more snakes there than you could shake a stick at. Oh, really? 
But we trained there quite a bit, and uh, of course boys will be boys, and some of them uh, shot a bunch of hogs. It's kind of wild hogs. Wild right? hogs, mm -hmm. but uh, there wasn't no more of that because they made them get out there and load them up and haul them off. So that was the end of that good time. <laughs> but th there's where we took our infantry training. So they had you marching and carrying well, a pack and, and uh, sleeping on the ground and uh, get up and they'd be snake because we'd be warm. You know, Louisiana is pretty swampy, uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> we we got up and we yeah. had some Easterners there, and boy, they didn't think much of them snakes. And I told one of them, I said, "Well, I don't either," but anyway. It, w it wasn't too bad, but I, I didn't like the uh, patrol duty at night. I, I, I didn't really care for that because uh, one time I, you're supposed to tell them to halt, and you know, in so many steps, why? <laughs> well, I told them to halt, and they just kept it coming, but it was a great big old sow with oh. pigs. And <laughs> so, got over that, but no, I didn't. And then when we, we got, I got out of that, and uh, then I had a delay and route home, which was going overseas. So I got a delay and route, and, and um, on the railroad, of course, and then <coughs> I was sport, uh, report east, and so I did, and uh, then they issued this lot of new gear to go overseas, overcoats too, to go to the Pacific. Go to the Pacific? Yep, and we had overcoats and, and everything you'd think of. Well, we went to, I remember where we went, we ended up in Stoneman, California. And uh, I've never been on a very good sized boat. So uh, they loaded us up and told us that we'd have a, a lunch. Well, uh, we didn't we didn't go in and see any of the, the sunken ships, but. I noticed there was so many other big ships of, of Sam Lee, and, and I don't remember, I think it was, it was there almost two days, and we started out one evening, and boy, I'm telling you, I, I, I had never seen or paid any attention to destroyers, but boy, we had quite a convoy going there. And, but we zigzagged all the way across. Well, they took us straight to the Philippines. That's where we and uh, we we passed one island uh, that you could see some some ships or hulls, you know, off of the and uh, so. Uh, now this, well I'd say I can't remember, but I remember it took us 43 days to get over there. We go one way and then just kept it zigzagging. Well we got over in the Philippines and and we unloaded this and uh, Went to shore, didn't didn't have no docks or nothing. They just unloaded this. Anyway, they had a big place there for uh, it was replacements for these divisions, and I and I was put in the 41st Infantry Division, and they was okay. Anyway. I was put in the 41st Infantry Division, and, 
And of course the rumors the, the atomic bomb hadn't been dropped yet. There's a general come and told told us that we would be on the invasion of the mainland Japan. So that didn't make that didn't really you know that when you're like that, well, it's just that. But then there was another officer come, and, and that's when it really woke us up. He said they'd probably be 100% casualties the, the first uh, wave that went in. And, uh, of course, <laughs> you, you, that was, that we was young, but it still stuck with us. But anyway, as as we trained, our biggest trouble there. Now that was that was there we uh, we uh, were trained there. But our biggest trouble then was uh, they was stray pockets of Japanese up in the hills. And they'd fire on us once in a while, but, uh, you know, there's not too much come of that. But then the, we got our supplies off the Navy would bring in. And they, boy, there was great rumors of war, and that, of course they wanted to take bets of when the war was going to be over and, uh, and all that. And, and that went on for about two weeks, and uh, as I remember right, and uh, then w they uh, called us all out one day and said that a bomb had been dropped in in on Japan, and and uh, it was a bomb that never had been used before, and that's about all they said, and then. And the war was just about to come to an end. Well, that was great news. And we all thought maybe we was going home. Well, we wasn't. So they, in about a month, they loaded us up in a ship. And they said we was going to occupy Japan. Well, we got up to off for an hour and went in there, I don't know what for, but that big storm, a good big storm was coming on, and we went out, of course they made us turn around and get out of there, and there was several ships, and boy they were just like corks out there, they'd go out of sight, and finally they made us go down below because the water was starting to come over the top. Anyway, we got up to Japan, and uh, I call it Kure Naval Base. I don't know if that's the right pronounce. K U R E Naval Base, and uh, we was out. Oh, I suppose I don't know. I suppose a couple of miles. And I could see better than I do now, and uh, there was a lot of activity. I'll tell you. Of course, Japanese people almost almost run, and um, that went on for about a half a day because we just sat out there. Is it off of Okinawa? Uh, no, Curry. Oh. Uh, we were there at Curry Naval Base. Oh. There in Japan, and and the people was. I don't know, and boy, they, they, they would just go in every direction. Well, about four o'clock in the afternoon, we disembarked. And, and when, you, when you go in to invade some way, you, you get on your, those little boats and they go in a circle and we headed for sure and I just knew we was going to get our butts blowed off, but we didn't. And they, uh, it was well planned because when we got there, they was a little dock that we could, that we could get off, nothing fancy, get off on, and and we 
got all, all of our men off and lined up. And, and then one of the fellows said to us, said, now, this is going to be a long march, probably three or four hours. And uh, anyway, every intersection, now, I want everybody to get every intersection. There was a Japanese, either police officer or, or military, but they, had, they didn't face us. Their back was toward us. And we, we marched, of course, our place was all ready for us, but, but we marched about three or four hours before we got to this particular place and, and it was uh, nothing fancy, it was just a great big building and, and I know several of us uh, commented, it was so clean. Boy, I'm telling you, it was clean. Well, we was there about a month, I guess. Then, uh, they asked for volunteers, but nobody volunteered. So they took, I think there's about 200 of us, and they took us out in, just, I thought it was just out in the boondocks, but we kept going, and there's just a little old village, and they had a lot of ammunition, a lot of ammunition, casings. And uh, they was going to melt all those down. Huh. But then they was, they was about uh, six inch by three inch little bars, but they had to be counted, accounted for. So that was my job. They did, that went on 24 hours a day. And uh, we, that, that, all of our job was just to be sure that there was counted. And uh, we had to turn that in, of course, eight hour shifts. So this they, some, some kind of precious metal or? Well, no, they just the casings. They, they just didn't. And then uh, they wanted us to go over and, and uh, be sure that uh, uh, Japan had a, a, a great machine shops mm -hmm. and it had U.S. on it too. But anyway, we went over and, and they was long pieces of uh, old uh, kind of bronze metal. I think two inch in diameter is the biggest. And we went over there and, and they loaded that on a barge. And I don't know how many thousands or millions of dollars we dumped out in the ocean. Hmm. And uh, then when we got that done, why, <clears throat> or we wasn't quite done, but anyway, they wanted uh, volunteers for about 10 or 12 soldiers. Well, nobody volunteered, so. I was one of them they picked, and they had leather goods, you know, like old saddles and stuff like that. And I expect that pile was as high as this ceiling and probably half a block long. And, and they this burn it. Was this in southern uh, Japan? The Americans did plain old burn it. I'm not sure where this is now. Uh, Philippines or Japan? Japan. That was in Japan. On the mainland of Japan. <laughs> And they just burnt that. Well, then we went back to where we started from, and, and uh, they said, You're going on a uh, tour tomorrow. <laughs> so, well, that was all right, but I'm not sure it was all right is because where they dropped the bomb, they went in there with bulldozers and just bulldozing. And the army trucks with all these GIs went. 
And you can't believe how hot that atomic bomb was. It, it just, uh, well, a sake bottle, back what they had their liquor in was about like, but it would be about like uh, another bottle of uh, old lime ricky or something like that. They was just fused together, melted together. The uh, trucks, and I'm saying trucks, that we saw, it just burnt the tires off of them. They wasn't just nothing standing. And they, and they had some pretty good buildings. Their propaganda said they was all, uh, uh, just would burn up. But And, and it did, like a, a stone building, there was nothing left but the frame. It just burned everything. And the first thing you notice when we come into town, they, that river was pretty good size, about like this Call River, probably, and a bridge about like that. The bridge was there, but the banister was gone. It just blowed the banister, just hmm. the railings were gone. And of course, they had so many tile roofs, and you'd notice those kind of wrinkles and out of shape. And boy, when you, when you got uh, where the bomb really went off, <laughs> they, I'll tell you, I don't know, I suppose that was a mile you could see, it did nothing but rubble. Trees, everything going. So, this would be how long after the bomb? About two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after we got off, of, after we got off of that, well, then then they decided that. See, you went home on points. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us shouldn't even went there because we had almost enough points to go home. Well, they they decided they needed. Uh, people to go in the, where they had all their trucks stored that, that didn't hardly run and, and the summer trailers, you know, needed work on them and stuff like that. And they picked out the mechanics and naturalists too, but I wasn't no mechanic. But anyway, I worked on summer trailers there, oh, I don't know, three or four months. And a lot of them didn't need much, maybe a tire or something and uh, as you know and everybody else knows them <laughs> were, were pretty wasteful no but good. we got a lot of those deals there wasn't nothing wrong with them just little maybe air brakes didn't work we put in a new line you know and this was American equipment or American, Japanese? American equipment. American equipment. Uh -huh. All of it is American equipment. Okay. Anyway, we got that. We got along pretty good. And, and um, then they, they come and uh, told us if we had so many points we could go home. Well, I had enough points that I got to come home and I was, I was really happy about that, but I heard that you really got a fantastic dinner. It's your first meal at home, <laughs> and we went up uh, in Washington. There, Puget Sound went in through there, and of course, uh, they was a little kind of like a tugboat, and, and of course they had their band and the singers and the entertainers all aboard. They, we get a wonderful meal, anything you wanted. Then after that, I went to Colorado and Fort Logan, and there's where I discharged and come home. And that's that that was my army experience. But uh, how many years and months was that now? About two and a half years. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Uh -huh. But as far as me getting on any, uh, you know, blood and guts deal, I, I didn't get in on that. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting, Mr. Baxter. Thank you for coming in today.
Well, thank you for having me. It's our privilege.